All right, so today I want to talk about the electrical system that we've put in. Um, I'm going to open this up so you can see the mess behind and, uh, and the reason why. I'm not going to show you all the behind the scenes of that. on connectors basically all you have to do is uh, open these up slide a wire in and then pinch it down and now it's now it's nice and secure and uh, I didn't need to use any tools right so I want to kind of show you how it's wired in the back and how everything is set up so we have a switch box on the front that runs on 12 volts it receives power from two different power sources. One is this uh, DC to DC converter, and another one is uh, is another DC to DC converter that's controlled that I can control through the front, and I can control the voltage. I'll show you that in a second. Um, basically, I wanted to have two step down converters just in case one fails while. I'm out, uh, I don't know, for a fishing trip. I can switch everything over to the other one and still kind of keep going for the weekend. Um, we also have an inline watt meter that kind of shows us the draw. Uh, one of our DC converters has that built in, but for the other one, we have an inline uh, watt meter right here. We have a DC 12 uh, to 24 volt uh, a heater that draws about 100 watts here. So it's a good backup heater. It'll keep the temperature stable in here just in case everything else fails. So I wanted to have a secondary backup. So this is it right here. All these items, most of them came from Amazon. I'll link the descriptions down below. This is my DC to DC step up converter. What this does, it takes my solar that comes in from the outside from the solar panel. Uh, and that solar panel runs, I think it's 42 volts or 45 volts. Uh, I need it to step up to 58.8 so I can charge the the e-bike batteries that I'm using. And they have their own BMS inside there, so I don't need to worry about them overcharging. But I do need um, a supply voltage of 58.8, so that's what this is set to. So anytime I have uh, a sun hitting the panel or even partial sun and this converter is going to step it up to, to always output at 58.8 it might be less amperage but really i can only charge those batteries at two amps at 58.8 which is 120 watts there's a 330 watt panel on the roof so it has more than enough voltage sorry wattage to supply uh what i need to charge the battery we also have a thermostat that I put in line that will control this heater. So once it gets to a certain temperature, this heater will turn off. Uh, that way I don't have it boiling in here. And for the light controllers, I just have these cheap Amazon, I don't know, $10, $15 controllers that run off a regular remote. That's why I have these things sticking out here so I can still control the lights if I need to. If I want to change the color or, or whatnot, the brightness. The lights inside draw about 13 watts at the brightness that are set right now. I can turn them down to draw them down to three, four watts. So I'm gonna close this back up and show you how everything works. We have our outside lights. We have our inside lights. We have uh, dual USB charger, one amp and 2.1. And we have a 12 volt, five amp adapter. And then you can see, it shows me my input voltage 47.7. That's from the e-bike battery. My output is set to 12 volts. You can easily change this around if you wanted to. You can put it Thirteen, fifteen. You can see the, the lights get way brighter here. 
So my other DC converter is feeding these two circuits and it's being fed through here so that way I can monitor the wattage being used. If I turn the first one on, it's gonna actually turn on my outdoor USB. Our outside USB that I ran, it's got quick charge 3.0. This is for our USB pump that's gonna be running our heat exchanger as well as the speed controller for the radiator fans that I have set up here. So if I turn those on, They go pretty loud. You see I'm using about 17 watts. I usually like to bring them down so they're not very noisy and run them around, I don't know, seven watts, eight watts. No, well, maybe even around 10, but it's not too loud. Pushes off a lot of heat that's on a radiator. And uh, yeah, you got a separate speed controller there. So I'm going to turn this off. Um, the last circuit here is for the temperature controller for this little heater. So if I'm going to shut that off, I'll turn this on. You see the thermostat turns on. It's set to turn on the heater if it's below 20 degrees. You can reprogram this and you can also have another control relayed for the cooling as well. If you want to turn on a fan to blow some air in here, which at one point I'm probably going to install. But you can see the, the fans starting up, uh, the heater's starting to warm up. It's about 65 watts. That's going to work it say, itself up to about 80, 90, 100 watts. As it gets warmer, it starts pulling a little bit more heat. That works pretty good. Thermostat's in, this is in. We got some USB power. We got easy access to all the power for the inside and outside lights. And that's it for the electrical. So I put these uh, latches in that you can swivel on and I'll keep this nice and secure and stop anything from getting in. And Underneath, we actually uh, we put uh, rock guard on the whole bottom of the sled. We also uh, treated the whole outside of the cabin with some waterproofing uh, sealant, three coats. It's going to help protect some of the wood throughout the winter time. We also put some shelving in here at the top just to store a few things, like the battery, keep it off the ground. Um, one of our mounts uh, for the main second level bedding has broke. I think this wood's just too weak. This isn't thick enough. So we're going to head down to my buddy Chucky's.
if we get super cold or need to run an inverter, we can run it through the 12 volt adapter. But uh, there's another option. We can uh, use this nice little battery pack from AimTom. It's got a it's got a one ton, 12 and USB power, and it's a really handy unit. You can also charge it off of uh, solar power by connecting uh, a DC jack with the specific solar panels compatible with this. Now it's a great pack. It's about 230 or 240 watt hours and uh, it's plenty for in here but if you're run, trying to run a 100 watt heater this battery pack will be drained in two two and a half hours and considering this is over 300 dollars that's pretty expensive where my e-bike batteries uh i have three of them each of them hold about 700 watt hours so three of them together is going to be about 2100 watt hours allowing me to run this heater for over 20 hours straight and about 10 times as long as this this solution here no other charger i have is able to charge the macbook pro that i have except for this one uh, through usb-c great little unit all in one throw up there and out of the way um the bar too over here so the support when we're not using it it just gets mounted up here out of the way unless we have three people who are trying to sleep in here me and my two two boys then this is going to be out of the way most of the time there's enough sleeping here for two people side by side with without any issues